Okay, first question on simultaneous equations, question 13, is a fairly standard one, fairly simple one hopefully. Um, and we start in the typical way by labelling both of our equations. And we want to look and see what there is that's the same in both equations. And hopefully you can see quite easily that there's 3y in each. 1 is plus and 1 is minus. So the way to get rid of them is to add the two equations together because the signs are different, so we will add. So let's do that. If we add the x's, 2x plus x is 3x. Um, we add the y's, 3y plus minus 3y is of course nothing. So you don't have to write plus 0, but you can if it helps you remember and keep track. And of course 0 plus 9 is 9. And so then just to find x, we're going to divide by 3. So x equals 3. Um, next, we want to find the corresponding y value. So we're going to substitute into, well, any one of my two equations. And I'm just going to pick the one that I think looks easiest to deal with. Um, in this case, I'm going to go with equation 1. So we have 2x, which is now 2 times 3, plus 3y equals 0. And I'm just going to subtract 6 from both sides. So 3y is equal to minus 6, and divide by 3 to get y equals minus 2. So my solution is that x equals 3, y equals minus 2. Moving on, uh, question 14, um, same process, but there's a bit more to it. We have to change uh, the equations first a little bit so that we can get rid of either uh, the x terms um, or get rid of the y terms. And by get rid, I mean eliminate. It doesn't really matter which one you choose in this example. Um, I'm going to get rid of the x's, so I need to make them both have the same number of x's. In this case, I'm going to go with 10x. So equation 1 needs to be multiplied by 5, giving me uh, 10x minus 15y is equal to 55. And to get the same thing in equation 2, um, we want to multiply the 5x by 2. So multiply the whole equation by 2. Don't forget we're doubling each term. So 5x becomes 10x, 2y becomes 4y, and 18 becomes 36. And of course we label these two new equations 3 and 4 so that we can easily explain what we're doing by referring to these equations by their number. Now we have 10x in both, and the 10x's are both positive. Um, you might not do it this way, but some people choose to use SSS to represent same sign subtract. So these have the same sign, so we're going to eliminate them by subtracting one equation from the other. Now, depending on which way around you do this, you might end up dividing by a negative, but I'm going to subtract equation four, uh, equation 3 from equation 4. And that means that I'm doing 4y minus minus 15y, which gives me positive 19y. This is the step that would cause the most problems, so take extra care with that. And of course, 36 minus 55 is minus 19. Um, so now to get y, I just need to divide by 19. So y is equal to minus 1. And as with the other uh, question, we're going to substitute it into one of our equations. Um, I think I'll go with uh, equation 2. So we have 5x plus 2y, but y is minus 1, so we now have 2 times minus 1, and that is equal to 18. Um, so that's obviously 5x minus 2 equals 18. And now this is straightforward to solve. I'm simply going to add 2 to both sides to get 5x equals 20, and divide by 5 to give x equals 4. So my solution, x equals 4, y equals minus 1. All right, number 15 is different. This involves a quadratic. Okay, we start the same way uh, by labeling our equations so that we can refer to them. Um, but the method is different. We don't do elimination. Uh, when you've got quadratics like this, uh, the method is always to use substitution. So you need to have one bit that you can substitute straight into the other. Now this is not quite in the form that we want. It's not in the form y equals. But we can easily achieve that uh, by adding x to both sides. So if we do that, we'll have y is equal to x plus 3. Um, and this is now perfect for substitution. I can substitute that into uh, equation 1. So if we do that, um, from equation 1 we're going to have x squared. And then instead of y squared, we now have um, x plus 3 squared. Okay, But we have to be very careful with x plus 3 squared. Make sure you write the brackets. Okay, otherwise it'll be a disaster. Um, but even with the brackets, 
we now need to factor, um, not factorize, expand the brackets, and we have to be very careful about how we do it. Because there's a very common mistake lurking here trying to get you. And my tip is if you're not really confident expanding these, um, then write it out like this, write it out the long way, okay? Because x plus three squared is obviously just x plus three times x plus three. Um, so if you write it out like that, it's really hard for you to miss out terms. Okay, so x times x is x squared. Um, x times the three gives you three x. Uh, the other three times that x gives you three x. And finally, the three times the three gives you nine. Okay, so when you expand any quadratic, you get four terms and then they will usually simplify. Um, now this is just a case of rearranging this to a standard quadratic format and then you can factorize and solve it. So I'm just going to subtract nine and at the same time gather together the x squareds and the x's so I can simplify it. And I'm noticing that all the terms are even so I can divide everything by two. That get, makes it much simpler for me. So x squared plus three x equals 10. And to make that look like a standard quadratic, I just need to subtract 10. So I'm left with x squared plus 3x uh, minus 10 is equal to 0. So this should be a fairly easy one to factorize. I want two numbers that multiply to give minus 10 and add to give 3. So the signs will be different. The positive one is bigger. Um, so I'm going to go with uh, positive 5 and minus 2. Okay. And if you're not sure, you can just spend a bit of time looking at the factors of 10, there's only two factor pairs, so it shouldn't take too long to get these ones. So now that's factorized, it gives me my two x values. If the first bracket is zero, x would be minus five. If the second bracket is zero, x would be two. Um, so I'm almost there, but now I have to substitute back into one of my equations. And I've got three equations, equation one and equation two, but when you have quadratics like this, the method tends to throw up a third equation which is perfect for substitution because it's in the form y equals. So using that equation, now using equation 3, I can say well when x is minus 5, y will be minus 5 plus 3, which is minus 2. It's a very straightforward equation to use now. And when x is 2, y will be 2 plus 3. So y is simply 5. So I've got my pairs of solutions, minus 5 and minus 2, and 2 and 5, and that's it.